So today our health topic is fiber. And I had a delicata squash I wanted to use. We decided we'd do a whole tray of root veggies that we'd bake. Aren't they beautiful? Beets, potatoes, carrots, and delicata squash. Very, very high fiber food. So we were listening to a health summit uh, a couple of weeks ago. And there's a fellow who wrote a book called Fiber Fuel. And I can't say his name. They talk, they refer to him as Dr. B because it's one of those long names with all the consonants. <laughs> and he's just such a wonderful guy. And there was a little segment of his talk where he was talking about how important variety of fiber is. We've been hearing a lot about the importance of the microbiome and what these microbes in our gut live on is fiber. But what he's pointing out is there's a lot of different types of fiber. And these little microbes that are in there, they're picky eaters, just like us. And so we want to give them a wide variety. So we keep that wide variety of population of microbes healthy and, and um, well populated so that we are the healthiest. So uh, we're going to share the, um, <clears throat> the video and then we'll have a little conversation. I treat every single meal as an opportunity to maximize the diversity of plants on my plate. Mm -hmm. So I want to unpack this. Now, people who have read my book probably know where I'm going here, but this is a very important takeaway for everyone who's listening. I'm a gut health doctor. I take care of people with digestive disorders for a living. I do this all day long. And what I see coming through those doors, people with abdominal pain, acid reflux, diarrhea, constipation, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, celiac, every single one of these conditions is connected back to damage to the gut microbiome. There's this invisible community that lives inside of us, 38 trillion living inside of us. That, that is our entire solar system filled with stars times 100, and it's microscopic, and it's inside of each one of us literally right now. And they're there with a purpose. They're not just there to be parasites, or they're not just you know, hanging out, they're there to help us to metabolize our food, to get access to nutrients, digestion. That's really sort of life force, if you will. They're intertwined with our metabolism, with our immune systems. For those that don't know, 70% of our immune system is separated from these microbes by the most thin of layers, single layer of cells. Again, separating 70% of the immune system from these 38 trillion microbes. They're connected to our hormones, our hormonal balance, our mood, our cognitive function, the way that our brain works, our memory, the expression of our genetic code. Our genetic code is not simply a, a program for how our life is going to be led and whether or not we get disease. Our genetic code has switches that can be turned on or turned off. Guess who's hitting those switches? These microbes. Mm -hmm. And so my goal is to eat to enrich my health. But one of my strategies in doing that is to support the health of these gut microbes. And their preferred food, because they need to eat, they're as alive as you and I are, Brian. Mm -hmm. Their preferred food is dietary fiber. Dietary fiber is unique because we as humans lack the enzymes to digest it, but these microbes, they have those enzymes. So the fiber makes its way through our intestine, gets through probably 15 to 20 feet without being digested. And then it comes into contact with 38 trillion hungry microbes that are down there in the cafeteria waiting to eat. And they consume the fiber that empowers them. They grow stronger and energized in the same way that we do when we eat. And then they take that fiber and they go to work and they transform it to release 
the most healing of molecules, literally the most anti-inflammatory thing that I've found in all of biology, hmm. short chain fatty acids, butyrate, acetate, propionate. Now, I just wanted to lay the foundation on the gut microbiome because what's important here is that we need to feed these microbes and they like fiber, but it's not so simple as just, you know, stirring an orange drink and then drinking that supplement. This is about the food that you eat. Each one of us during our lifetime will consume about 80,000 pounds of food, a couple milligrams of medicine, a couple grams of a fiber supplement will never be more important than the weight of the 80,000 pounds of food that you eat. And if you want to eat to feed your gut microbes, which is what I want to do, then I'm about to empower you with perhaps the most important, the most relevant trick that we found. And this is completely scientifically validated. These gut microbes, they like fiber, but fiber isn't just fiber. There are unique types of fiber. And these gut microbes, they're like us. They are picky eaters. So not every single microbe is going to like Metamucil. Not every single microbe is going to like kale. Specific foods feed specific families of microbes. And we want diversity within our gut. We want as many different varieties of microbes as possible. Diversity is a good thing. It's a measure of health mm -hmm. within the gut. The way that we get diversity within the gut is by recognizing that diversity on the plate translates into diversity in the gut. And Brian, in a clinical research study called the American Gut Project, which by the way, was not just Americans, it was actually people from around the world, but it originates out of the University of California, San Diego. They looked at more than 10,000 people, more than 15,000 specimens, microbiome specimens. And they asked the question, what is the most powerful indicator of a healthy gut microbiome? And emerging out of the data, was one clear answer. The diversity of plants in your diet is the single most powerful predictor of a healthy gut. So my first tangible important step that I personally do, this is no joke, and, and I encourage everyone at home to do it as well and join me, is to treat every single meal as an opportunity to feed your gut microbes by maximizing the diversity of plants on your plate. More diversity on the plate translates to more diversity in your gut, and that is a healthy gut, and you will reap the benefits as a result of that. Hmm. Wow. Okay, I thought he explained it um, very well, the whole process with the microbiomes. But I was waiting for him to say what fibers... There is no such thing as different fibers. Fiber is fiber. Is that why he didn't tell us what we should be eating in different colors? Well, actually, you have, no. yeah, actually, um, if you break it down, fiber is a general category, but there are there's soluble fiber, there's insoluble fiber <clears throat> within even those categories. Um, the structure of it is different because you think about the structure of the fiber that holds a kale leaf together is mm -hmm. different than the structure of the fiber in the pulp of an apple. Okay. So yeah, it's a, it is a little bit different and it's still under the umbrella fiber because it is this structural stuff that we don't have the enzymes to digest. Okay, gotcha. That's, that's a good question, really good question. So it, it, fiber is in everything we eat, pretty much? Yeah, anything that has structure. Fiber is what gives it its structure. Great. Yeah. That's good. We have a lot to choose from. <laughs> right. So here's the thing. What happens when we take a piece of white bread and put it in water? You know, so yeah. much of what is removed in processing is the fiber. because it, you have to chew more, doesn't add flavor, you know, so it, it's like when we started to uh, process food, the fiber was one of the first things to go. The difference between brown rice and white rice, uh, the difference between brown bread and white bread. And so, yeah, um, that's the thing. Whole foods 
eat your whole foods and you get that whole menu of all the variety of all the different fibers and plenty of it. Well, his definition of explanation as to how the microbiome deals with fiber was very good, very simple to understand. So we just continue to eat how we are supposed to eat. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think his main point was a wide variety. Yeah. We'll get all kinds of fiber from a wide variety, like in the baking pan we have today, we've got the fiber of beets, carrots, potatoes, squash, and they're all different. Mm -hmm. They're all wow. different. Well, and even within each of those, there's a variety of fiber because the fiber that's in the skin is different than the fiber that's in the pulp. So it, it, it's quite a fascinating thing. I mean, talking about big numbers, the fact that each one of us has 38 trillion microbes in our gut, a hundred times as many stars as there are in our universe. It's like, wait a minute, 8 billion people with 38 trillion? I can't even go there with the numbers, right? Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, some people joke about that and they say, you know, really, we're more bacteria than we are human. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> There's more bacteria DNA in our bodies than human DNA. So what makes us human, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it has something to do with consciousness, but anyway, on a physical standpoint, look out how you define yourself. <laughs> okay, here it is. Here, here are our root high fiber. Now these are done, but they're not soft, soft, soft. The potatoes are fine. We could eat this now, but I think an hour is more an appropriate time. So I'm going to put it in back in and let it cook another yeah, 15 I like minutes them soft. at least. I like them soft. But yeah. they're beautiful. Yeah.